Hello to my lovely new Armstrong class. So just to remind you, my name is Miss Spencer and I'm your new teacher for year six. I'm very excited. It was so lovely to meet you all and get to know you on our two transition days. But before the summer holidays, I just wanted to share a story with you that we are going to be looking at in our first half term of year six. So our first unit of writing, we are going to be studying a book called Survivors. And it is all in the name. It's about um, people surviving amazing experiences. So I'm going to read you one of the stories from this book because it's a compilation of um, many stories. And this first one is called The Girl Who Fell From The Sky. So I'm gonna read it for you. I hope you enjoy it. On Christmas Eve, 17-year-old Julianne was flying high above the South American rainforest when the airliner carrying her and her mother was hit by a violent storm. The previous evening had been prom night at her school, but now term was over and they were heading home for the holidays. Home meant the remote Amazonian town of Pulcapa in Peru, where her father worked as a biologist. Her mother, Maria, was an ontologist who studied birds and their behaviour. Sharing her parents' passion for science and nature, she planned to follow their example by studying biology at university. On board the four-engined Lockhead Electra aeroplane, she could hear other passengers complaining because their flight had been delayed by nearly seven hours. But they were now airborne and she was very happy to be on holiday and looking forward to seeing her father. From her window seat, she noticed storm clouds in the distance, but she loved flying and, and had no reason to feel afraid. Her mother felt less relaxed about the storm, never quite believing that something mental could, a metal could rival the birds she studied. Maria didn't like flying at the best of times. Now she began to feel anxious as the Electra dipped suddenly and entered a massive dark rain cloud. Before long, the plane was being buffeted about by the air currents. And after a few minutes, even she began to feel that there was something not quite right. Bags and other pieces of luggage started to fall from the over overhead racks and drinks tipped into passengers' laps. Soon Christmas presents and parcels began bouncing around the cabin as the aircraft was pitched up and down by the turbulence. Through her window, Julianne could see flashes of lightning around her and the aircraft. With the storm obviously closing in, she began to feel scared. Above the sound of the propellers, several passengers could be heard crying as she reached across for her mother's hand. The violent pitching continued like this for nearly 10 whole minutes, throwing the aircraft this way and that way. Gripping her mother's hand more tightly now, Julianne looked out of the window and saw that one of the engines was glowing brightly. Her mother also noticed this and quietly said, That's, that is the end, it's all over. These were the last words she heard Julianne um, Julianne ever heard her say. Moments later, the cabin was plunged into darkness and the Electra went to a steep nosedive. Julianne couldn't see anything in the pitch black and could hear nothing but the roar of the engines. Then, just as suddenly, everything went silent. With a shock, the teenager realised she was somehow outside of the aeroplane. She's still strapped into her seat, but tumbling over and over and over. With nothing around her but the rush of cold air, she was plummeting down towards the jungle. Coming out of the clouds, she momentarily glimpsed um, the top of the tree spinning up to meet her like a giant patch of broccoli. It was petrifying. She must have passed out immediately because the ne next thing she remembered was waking up the following morning. It was Christmas Day. She was still strapped into her seat, but now she was wedged firmly into the ground. 40 minutes after taking off, the aircraft had apparently been struck by lightning. One deadly bolt caused the fuel tank to explode and rip off the right wing. As the, fuel, uh, the fuse lay, uh, lag began to, began to disintegrate around her, Julianne had been thrown clear of the airborne wreckage. 
and then fell more than two miles down into the deep jungle. Despite the trauma of the experience, she noticed at once what had happened. Looking up at the trees, she knew she had survived an air disaster, probably because her seat had broken the fall as she crashed through the dense foliage. Unsurprisingly, this 17-year-old was in considerable pain and feeling dizzy. She had a she had broken her collarbone, damaged a ligament in one knee and sustained deep cuts and bruises as she hit the ground. Her left eye was so swollen shut. Uh, sorry, it was also swollen shut, but she could still walk and she knew she had to find a way to safety soon. Julianne had learned enough about the jungle from her parents to know it wasn't a danger, as dangerous as people like to think. Travelling on foot, it was important to keep a cool head and not to do do anything foolish but she had no idea where she was or where any of the other passengers were. She had also lost a shoe and her glasses. With complicated things as she would which complicated things sorry as she was very short-sighted. Now she nor was she dressed for a, jun a jungle trek with only light cotton summer dress to protect her from the biting, stinging insects that were buzzing all around her. The first thing to establish was if anyone else was nearby, especially her mother. But when Julianne called out, there was no response except the chatter of animals. Sometime later, she was thrilled to hear an aircraft circling overhead. Presumably, the crew were looking for survivors. But since she couldn't see the plane through the thick of the canopy of trees, she quickly realised they could not see her either. This realisation made her feel utterly alone. For a while, Julianne had lived in a, the remote scientific research station and her father had taught his daughter some useful survival tips. For example, he told her that when walking through shallow water, it can be safe it can be safer than walking on land because snakes and other venomous creatures are hard to spot on the ground and may attack if anyone steps too near them. She also knew that jungle settlements tend to be built along rivers. So if she stayed near the water, she would stand a better chance of meeting someone who would find um, and find help. Until this happened, however, her situation looked desperate. She had nothing to eat except a small bag of sweets and she had no idea how she might have to walk how far she might have to walk to reach safety soon dozens of insects were dropping onto her skin climbing into her hair and with the sun up in the rainforest it was unbearably hot it was also very wet because of the torrential storms like the one had that had brought down the electra it continued on and off throughout the day having failed to find signs of anyone nearby, Julianne started to walk and when she came to a small stream, she decided to follow it. It was lucky that there, were plenty of, there was plenty of water to drink, but the rainy season meant there was no ripe fruit on the trees. And from her parents' jungle training, she knew that eating anything else would be too risky. At nightfall, the temperature dropped dramatically and with her sleeveless dress wet through, Julianne felt terribly cold. She also felt very lonely as well as frightened. Unable to sleep, she sat shivering as she listened to the startling sounds of the rainforest at night. The following morning, she continued slowly along the course of the stream. It didn't take long before the little bag of sweets was empty. When, and when her watch stopped, she la uh, rapidly lost track of time. After a couple of days, she heard the sound of a king vulture somewhere nearby. From her mother, she knew that the, these huge carnivores tend to land only where there is lots of food around. Knowing they only eat dead animals, she had to consider the gruesome possibility that the bird was looking for bodies from the plane. To her horror, the fears were proved correct shortly afterwards when she stumbled across a bank of seats from the aircraft. It was, uh, it was partly buried in the undergrowth and Julianne could see three bodies still strapped into place. For a moment, she thought one of them might be her mother, but then she noticed nail varnish on the toes, which Maria, her mother, never wore. In fact, Julianne never did find any more survivors during her time in the jungle. She later learned that 91 of the people on board of the Electra 
and she was the only one left alive. For several days, she continued her journey downstream, alternatively walking and swimming. This made her progress very slow and swimming led to lots of serious burns from the sun beating down on her back and arms. Together with her other injuries, this caused more and more pain. While the lack of sleep and the effort needed to keep moving only added to her exhaustion. She was also alarmed to find that the insect bites were becoming infected and that now live maggots were now burying under her skin. Yuck. After a week, Julianne realised she could no longer hear the aircraft above, meaning that the authorities must have stopped looking for survivors. This scared her, but also made her very angry, knowing they had given up, even though she was in the jungle fighting for her life. She began to despair, but on the ninth day, to her astonishment and delight, she found an old broken down boat on a stretch of the riverbank where she'd been resting. Her first thought was to take the boat, but she didn't want to be accused of stealing. Instead, she looked around and noticed a path running up the bank into the trees. Climbing the path, she took her strength as she was so tired and hungry. But at the top, she found a small shack. Inside it was an outboard, mo outboard motor and a can of fuel, which reminded her of a trick her father used to cure the family dog of worms. Pouring petrol onto her wounds ought to kill the mag maggots, or at least get them off her skin. Julianne knew the stinging would be excruciating, but she, it was worth a try. After dousing one arm in flammable liquid, she counted no fewer than 40 maggots as they dropped out of her wounds and onto the ground. The effort left her even more exhausted and wrapping herself in tarpaulin from the shack, she quickly fell asleep. Waking up the following day, Julianne didn't feel much better and decided to stay in the shelter a bit longer because she was too tired to move. Outside, she could hear another rainstorm beginning, but later the rain died away. She thought she could hear voices approaching the shack. Struggling to her feet and pulling open the door, she was overjoyed to see the three forestry workers. The men were astonished and she quickly explained how about the crash and how she'd spent the last 10 days alone in the forest. The men offered her some food, but after so long without anything except water, she was unable to eat. They quickly decided to take her down river in their canoe. After seven hours on the water, she was flown to a hospital, then reunited with her father. Happily, Julianne went to make on a full recovery. Although for years afterwards, she was haunted by the nightmares about her ordeal and the loss of her mother and the other passengers. Ju Julianne never lost her love of biology. However, after qualifying in Germany, she returned to Peru many times to visit the, wild, um, the rainforest and study its wildlife. So that's an amazing survival story about Julianne there. And in this book, Survivors, there are so many amazing stories that we're going to be reading um, in our first term at year six. We've got lots of copies in the book corner as well, so you can read them in your free time at school. So I really hope you'll have a lovely summer holidays and I'm really looking forward to joining you again in September. Remember, my name will be Miss, uh, Mrs. Martin then because I'm getting married in the summer holidays. So have a lovely summer holidays, stay safe, enjoy yourself and see you in September Armstrong class. Bye.